everyone for today's lesson. We are going to be continuing our discussion about proofs, about lines and angles. For today's lesson, you will need to make sure that you have something to write with and a highlighter so that it will help you with your thinking today. Because we are going to be, um, now that we've practiced working with linear pairs and adjacent angles and supplementary and complementary angles, right angles, and vertical angles, we are going to be using those definitions to help us write proofs um, based on geometric figures. The All of our reasons and our statements for the proofs that you guys see here are located in two pages. So in two pages, we have example one, and here are all of the um, blanks that you will need for example one, example two, example three, and example four. We are putting all of the pieces together. So here we go. Looking at the very first um, proof, what we have is we are given angle four is a right angle. And we want to prove that the measure of angle two is 90 degrees. So before you even get started, analyze this problem. What do you notice about angle four being a right angle? What's a right angle? Well, a right angle is an angle whose measure is 90 degrees. So I know that this angle is gonna be 90 degrees. I also know that angle four and angle two have a special relationship. Their relationship is they are vertical angles. So I'm gonna write down that I know that angle four and angle two are vertical angles. And I know that vertical angles are congruent to each other. And if they're congruent, then they are equal in measure. And therefore, we would have that angle two has to also be 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking that we're going to be writing down for our proof. In this proof, there are going to be a total of five statements and reasons. So I'm gonna label this one, two, three, four, and five. And for all of the proofs that I will give you on your homework, as well as um, on any test or quiz, you will already have the numbers written down. So you don't have to come up with this proof on your own. Um, eventually, you'll have to come up with the proof on your own, but not quite yet. Okay, so the first thing that we always write whenever we are doing a proof is we always write our given. And our given is that angle four is a right angle. And we write this because it is given. So if you have out um, your proof statements, I'm, I have two uh, pages for us so that we can reference all of our blanks. So far, I have used given, and I have used that the angle four is a right angle. So these are the ones that I have used so far. Next, what did we talk about before? What do we know about right angles? We know that their measure is 90 degrees. So can we say in our statement that angle four has to equal 90 degrees? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Our next line has to be, well, let's talk about the fact that it's 90 degrees. And I'm gonna say that the measure of angle four is equal to 90 degrees. Why would I write that? Well, let's see about, let's talk about what came before and what is coming next. What came before is we had a right angle. What came next is it equals 90 degrees. So let's see if we have this. If an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. That is our if-then statement. So if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. There's our if-then statement. What came before was a right angle, and what came next was that it equals 90 degrees, and there's our if-then statement. 
So now what we want to do is we need to talk about angle two somehow. What do we know about angle two and angle four? Well, to bring angle two and angle four in, we know that angle four and angle two are vertical angles and therefore they are congruent. So I'm thinking that we're gonna write down that angle four or angle two and angle four are congruent to each other. So angle two has to be congruent to angle four. And why are they congruent to each other? Well, they're congruent to each other because they are vertical angles. And what we have here is if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. So that's what my next statement is gonna be. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Notice I didn't say equal in measure. So whenever we're talking about vertical angles, we're working with our congruent symbol. So you have to be really careful. You can't just automatically go to angle two and angle four are equal to each other. You have to talk about that congruent relationship. Remember congruence is a relationship. And then we can talk about measures. Because these two angles are congruent to each other, we wanna eventually have an equal sign at the very end of our proof. So I'm gonna write that the measure of angle two has to be equal to the measure of angle four. The measure of angle two equals the measure of angle four because if two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. Here's our if, there's our then. Congruent if equals then. So if two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. If two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. Well, look at what we also know about equality. We have the measure of angle four equals 90 degrees, and now we have the measure of angle four again. So what we can do is a replacement. What came before was the measure of angle four equals 90 degrees. I can replace the measure of angle four with 90 degrees in this statement to say the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. And look at that, that's what I wanted to prove. The measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. And I write that because I did a replacement, a substitution. So I use the substitution property of equality. And that is my first proof. And we are done. Let's go ahead and look at example number two. In example number two, we are told that angle one and angle two are supplements, and angle three and angle two are also supplements. What do we know about supplementary angles? Well, they are two angles that add to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna write that down. They add to 180 degrees. And I wanna prove that angle one and angle three have to be congruent to each other. So if they, we have two angles that add to 180 degrees, we're gonna be working with an equal sign and then we'll eventually be working with a congruent symbol. All right, let's go ahead and start off with this proof. This proof is going to be a total of five statements once again. Um, a lot of kids, I'm just going to put this out there, like to immediately write down the pieces that they already know. So we'll write that angle one and angle two are supplements. I'm just going to write sup. And angle uh, three and angle two are supplements. So I'm just going to write sup as well. And I'm writing this because it is given. And I also know that I'm eventually going to get to angle one is congruent to angle three. Those are the three points that are automatically something you should write down. So going from the very beginning, uh, looking at example number two, I already know where given is supposed to go. 
I already know that uh, angle one and angle two are supplements. I know where that's going to go. And I already know where um, angle one is congruent to angle three is going to go. I already know where they are going. So now I have to figure out what my plan is. So remember what I said to, to you guys about supplements and writing that definition of supplementary? Supplementary means that um, if we know the two angles are supplements, then they add to equal 180 degrees. So what I'm leaning towards is saying, is using that definition and saying that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. And the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two equals 180. That's what I'm leaning towards saying. Using that definition and writing down what I know. Why do I write this? Well, what came before was supplementary angles. What came next is they add to equal 180 degrees. So what we wanna do is look at what came before and then what comes next. What came before was supplementary angles that added to equal 180 degrees. So this is the statement that I believe that we're going to use next. If two angles are supplementary, then they add to equal 180 degrees. So I have, if two angles are supplementary, then they add to 180 degrees. Next, I notice a relationship. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. And the measure of angle three plus the measure of two equals 180 degrees. They both equal 180 degrees. And if I took out what they have in common, I can set these two statements equal to each other. So I'm going to write that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to equal the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two because they both equal 180 degrees. And that's the statement that I think that I want to write down next. And the reason why I would want to write that down is so that I can eliminate that 180 and just bring it down to measure, writing down a relationship between measure of angle one and measure of angle two along and how it's related to the measure of angle three and the measure of angle two. And what I did here was a substitution. I replaced an expression with another expression. This is the substitution property of equality. What I replaced is I replaced 180 degrees in both equations with the other expression. All right, what do you guys notice in this statement? Well, we have measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two. So somehow I have to get rid of the measure of angle two so that I can just get one and three together. So what I'm leaning towards is subtracting the measure of angle two on both sides which would mean that both measures of angle two would eliminate, leaving us with the measure of angle one equal to the measure of angle three. And I'm thinking that that is the subtraction property of equality. And I think that that's what our next statement is. The measure of angle one would have to equal the measure of angle three and I wrote that down because I need to get rid of two completely. So I'm going to write minus property of equality or the subtraction property of equality. Now, the only statement that's left is if two angles are equal in measure, then they are congruent. Let's view. I have equal in measure. That's what came before. And then I have congruent. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm going to write down if two angles are equal in measure. then they are congruent. They would be congruent to each other. And I think that that is the last statement that makes sense. We are done with our proof. All right, 
next, let's go ahead and view our next question. In example number three, what we have is angle S is a right angle and the measure of angle um, RTS is equal to 40 degrees. We're also told that the measure of angle RTU equals 90 degrees. And what we wanna prove is that the measure of angle S is congruent to the measure of angle STU. So if we were to look at STU, that's this angle right here, is STU. I know that 40 plus 50 is equal to 90. This is my thinking for this problem. 40 plus 50 is equal to 90. I know that the symbol of being a right angle is 90 degrees. So this has to be 90 degrees. And if they both have the same measure, then that means that the angles have to be congruent to each other. In this problem, we are going to have six statements. In which I already know what the very beginning looks like. I'm gonna write that angle S is a right angle. I'm gonna write that the measure of angle RTS equals 40 degrees, and the measure of angle RTU equals 50 degrees. And I write this because it is given. And I also know that my last statement is going to be angle S has to be congruent to angle S T U. I know that's my last statement. So when I'm looking at my um, different blanks, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna identify these statements that I already know the answers to. And so that is going to be um, my first statement. Angle S is a right angle, measure of angle RTS is 40 degrees, the measure of angle RTU is 50 degrees. And I'm gonna write given, I already know where that one goes. And finally, angle S is congruent to angle STU. I know where all of those go. So now what I need to do is I need to remind myself of what, of what I know, okay. So there's a few approaches for this problem. It just depends on what you see. And we can make a lot of things work for this problem, but what I know is that angle S is a right angle. And, there, and I also know that the measure of angle RTS is 40 and the measure of angle RTU is 50. So what I think I want to do is work with this information of RTS being 40 degrees and the measure of angle RTU being 50 degrees. And I think what I want to do is somehow bring in angle STU. And I know that, um, that 40 plus 50 equals 90. And how I know that is part plus part equals whole. This is an example of the segment addition postulate. So putting all of that together, I know that if we had the measure of angle RTS plus the measure of angle RTU, has to be equal to the measure of angle S to you. So what I did is I added all of my angles together to end up equaling the measure of angle S to you. And this is an example of the angle, sorry, I don't know why I said the segment. This is an angle, excuse me, addition postulate. Part plus part equals whole. So I think I wrote it in a different order, but it's the same thing. The measure of angle STU is equal to the measure of angle RTS plus the measure of angle RTU. And I wrote that because we used the 
angle addition postulate. And that is right here, the angle plus post, the angle addition postulate. Okay, so I already know that um, the measure of angle RTS is 40 degrees and the measure of angle RTU is 50 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is a replacement and say 40 plus 50 has to equal the measure of angle STU. That's what I'm leaning towards doing in my next statement. So I'm gonna say, um, just following along with my logic that I have, I'm gonna write 40 degrees plus 50 degrees is equal to the measure of angle STU. And what I did here was the substitution property of equality. What I did is I replaced what I knew about each of these angles, RTS and RTU, and I replaced it in our statement. So this is a substitution property of equality. Now I know that 40 plus 50 is 90 degrees. So I'm gonna write 90 degrees is equal to the measure of angle STU. And all I did here was simplify or combine like terms. So I'm gonna go back to my statements and make sure that I identify that. I have the measure of angle STU equals 90 degrees. I just used that. And all I did to get that answer was I combined my numbers together. 40 plus 50 equals 90. I've already used the substitution property of equality in our last statement. So now what I think I wanna say is that if this angle is 90 degrees, then it has to be a right angle. So I'm gonna say that angle STU is a right angle. So why can I say that? Well, what came before is its measure was 90 degrees and therefore I made the statement that it's a right angle. So I'm gonna say that if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. So what I used was this statement right here. And I'm gonna write, um, this is my reason. If an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Now, what we already know is that angle S is a right angle. We already know that from the very beginning. And since we now have shown that angle S to U is a right angle as well, we can now say that these two angles are congruent and that's because if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. All right, what I would like you guys to do right now is please go ahead and pause the video and see if you can ex do example number four on your own. If you have um, any question, or I'm sorry, I want you to try it on your own. I want you to pause the video and see if you can do that. And then I want you to restart the video and see how well you did. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this problem. I hope you marked up your picture because that is something that is really important for this type of problem. What we are given in this problem is angle one is congruent to angle two. And we wanna prove that angle three and angle four are supplements of each other. So we wanna prove that they are supplements. Remember that supplements means that they add to 180 degrees. So analyzing our picture, what I see are angle one and angle three are congruent to each other because they are vertical angles. And vertical angles we know are congruent. 
And I see that angle two and angle four are a linear pair. And I know that linear pairs, they are, are supplementary. And if they're supplementary, that means that they add to 180 degrees. So somehow, I'm also going to be working with the fact that if angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is congruent to angle three, angle two has to be congruent to angle three. And if angle two, a measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four add to equal 180, and two and three are the same measure, that means that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four have to equal 180, and therefore three and four are supplements. That's the direction that I think I wanna go in. But this requires thinking before you even get started. In this proof, there are eight statements. I know that my first statement is going to be angle one is congruent to angle two. And I write this because it is given. I know that my last statement is going to be angle three and angle four are supplements. I know that's my last statement. Right there is three points. Now let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. I know that angle one is congruent to angle two, which is cool, but based on this picture, I also know that angle one is congruent to angle three. And I'm gonna write that because angle one and angle three have the relationship of being vertical angles. So my if then statement is if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Next, I can see that angle one is congruent to angle two and angle one is congruent to angle three. So if I were to eliminate their connection, I can say that angle two has to be congruent to angle three. And I'm gonna write that because of the transitive property of congruence. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Angle one is congruent to angle three. Eliminating their connection, angle two has to be congruent to angle three. Cool. If they are congruent, then I can say that they are equal in measure. So the measure of angle two has to equal the measure of angle three. And that is if two angles are congruent, then they are equal in measure. And I wanna to bring together that they are equal in measure because of the fact that I'm going to be now talking about angle two and angle four being supplementary, which means that they are measures add to equal 180. And I wanna do a replacement somehow, working with the measure of angle three. And I wanna get rid of this discussion of congruence. I want it to now be in the realm of equality. So some, that's how I was able to make that connection. So now what I wanna do is I wanna talk about angle two and angle uh, four. They are a linear pair, so therefore they are supplementary. So I'm gonna write that angle two and angle four are supplementary. And I'm gonna write that they're supplementary because they are a linear pair. So if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. And what do I know about supplementary? Well, supplementary once again means that they add to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna write that the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four equal 180 degrees. What came before was we're talking about supplementary angles 
And what came next is they add to 180 degrees. If two angles are supplementary, then they add to 180 degrees. Now, I want to bring the connection of angle 3 into this statement because remember, my goal is to prove that 3 and 4 are supplements. So I know that the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 3 are equal to each other. And I know that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to 180. So therefore, I can say that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle four has to equal 180. All I did here was a replacement of what I already knew about the relationship between two and three. So this replacement is what we call the substitution property of equality. And now I have three and four add to equal 180, so therefore they are supplementary. If two, ang uh, two angles add to 180 degrees, then they are supplementary. And I have now proven that angle three and angle four are supplementary. And that is the end of this lesson. If you have any questions over anything that I just talked about, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.